Welcome to another Locked On 49ers, a very special day here, our first ever Winky Wednesday on the YouTube flat platform. Thanks everybody for jumping on with us. Make sure you hit the subscribe and appreciate all the new watchers now on YouTube and all the old listeners that have been with us for so many years on the audio podcast and we're still there with you every day, Apple Spotify, everywhere you can find pods, you could find Locked On 49ers. We're talking a little bit more about some playoff scenarios here. What happens to the odds if the 49ers win or lose Sunday? We'll dip into the mailbag a little bit with Wink and just have a lot of fun here on another Winky Wednesday on today's episode of Locked On 49ers. <laughs> Niners, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As we do on Wednesdays, our weekly guest, Nicholas Winkler, about to jump on with me, Brian Peacock. That is Eric Crocker over there, a former NFL, AFL player. Uh, I am a former... Slow pitch softball. I current slow pitch softball player, though. I don't want to cut myself short here on my. You hit. Ass. You just hit two home runs. So. I hit a couple bombs that didn't yeah. count. Um, it's it's November and we're still playing ball here, which I like in California. You can't do that in a lot of places in the country. But the season's about to end, and we might have to wrap it up until next spring. So I'll be a former softball player here in the, the next week or so. Um, Croc. Are you ready to bring on today's guest? If you guys that listen to the show every day, you know about Winkler. For those of you who do not and are just catching us on YouTube for the first time, Nicholas Winkler, my old compadre from our radio days together reporting on traffic. Uh, we used to have a podcast called Gold Faithful. That was a weekly show that was the precursor to this show. So let's bring on today's guest. Nicholas Winkler, come on down. Hey, there he is. Look at the What's up, guys? Value. Look at the production value we got. Wink and I were doing radio stuff together. We never did all this fancy TV stuff here. If you're watching, uh, if, if you're just listening at home or listening in the car and you don't see what's going on, you got to check out the YouTube channel and see this high level of video production we got going on these days. Wink, how you doing, man? Yeah, I really like that intro you had there. Video graphics and everything. Woo! Next level stuff. Wait, how about this? How about a bottom third for you? Hey, Winky Ooh. Wednesday. Love it. Yes, another Winky Wednesday. The Wink is on fire. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, Wink, mm -hmm. I know there's good vibes right now after dominating yeah. performance by the 49ers. By the way, quick stat. The drive, which resulted in a field goal, this from uh, NFL football operations. That drive, that 13-minute and five-second drive that resulted in a field goal to start the game Sunday, Jacksonville Jaguars, that's the longest drive since November 27th. 1997 in the Ooh, NFL. Wow. The longest drive of the season last week against the Rams, or two weeks ago against the Rams. Now, last week, they have the longest drive since 1997. We're talking Steve Young, Jerry Rice suiting up in a 49ers uniform the last time uh, there was a drive that long in the NFL. So pretty amazing stuff there. Not a lot to stink on, right? But but uh, let's start with the negative. Get that out of the way because I know you're going to be always fired up about something and then we'll jump into all the positives and hit some mailbag questions here as well. And and look at some of these playoff scenarios in the NFC if the 49ers win or lose Sunday. But Wink, the floor is yours to get this started. What are you stinking on this week? Well, I mean, you mentioned it. You know, there's a lot of good vibes going on, a lot of good stuff happening, two in a row looking dominant amazing drive i mean it's hard to call it epic because it ended in a field goal but you know you gotta like the the domination of the the defense there early in a football game for me it's more upcoming it, it's the fact that the 49ers got flexed out of sunday night because the seahawks are garbage like it's great that the seahawks are garbage i love that it's fantastic but the fact that the 49ers now miss out on a prime time game i love it when they're in prime time because you don't get distracted by all these other games going on they're the only thing on everybody's watching it, it just I'm a little upset about it. I'm a little upset too because of who they got flexed out for. I, I think at the end of the day, uh 49ers versus Seahawks, you, you know that regardless of what the records are, and you know, with especially with the way the rosters are constructed right now, like that's gonna be a game. That's gonna be a game right? regardless, especially with it being out there in Seattle. Like, how do you flex that game out for I don't even remember the teams, but I remember seeing it and being like, You got flexed for that? That's not even appealing. 
It's the it's Kansas. It was City. like they Kansas. Always get it was Kansas time City, time but the opponent wasn't anything. Yeah. Any, there wasn't even like any meaning to that that matchup. Right. It's not like an NFC West. You know, these guys have been rivals for a long time now. And you got to think about it too. A couple of weeks ago, Monday Night Game Rams Forty Niners. That on paper didn't look like it was going to be a very good game. And if they could have flexed that out, they might have. You know. Well, it wasn't a good game, but just. <laughs> it was for us. Thought it was going to go. <laughs> I had right. thoroughly enjoyed that game in prime time, and uh, that's Love probably it. what they're worried about is having another one like that. But Russell Wilson's got some magic, and yeah, flexing 49ers Seahawks out of prime time, that's just a sad state of affairs for the NFL and for the Seahawks franchise because it's the Seattle mm. Seahawks is the reason that was flexed out, not because of now the 500 San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. You the matchup coming up this week with the Minnesota Vikings? Oh, wait, Croc, you got something yeah. else? Well, I just looked at it's the it's the Chiefs versus the Broncos. I mean, uh, and like, okay, maybe they can look at it like, okay, that's a. I don't think you're AFC West. Yeah, it is AFC West, but I don't think you're getting anything more from that game that you wouldn't get from 49ers versus Seahawks. Yep. Yeah, no, not at all. The Broncos, I, Russell Wilson against the 49ers is way better than Teddy Bridgewater against the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. Yeah, he's like, going for star power. Doing? Uh, um, Patrick it's Mahomes TV show. TV commercials. That's that's why they're trying to go. And that's it. Home star power, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. the game is not better. I don't think on paper or or otherwise. So yeah, Niners. Niners draws. Kids got out of a prime timer there. Mm-hmm. And I'm stinking on it big time. Like if it was wow. like this last week, Cowboys against the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, all right, you know, I, I, I get, get it. it. Chiefs Broncos. Garbage. Mm, all right. Anyways. That is. Thank you for sharing in my stink, gentlemen. Yeah, no, that's a good stink. I'm glad you brought that one up, Winkler. Uh, I, I want to look at some playoff scenarios, courtesy of 538 here in a little bit. Um, Wink, what was your takeaway from the win against the Jaguars? Final thoughts there before we turn the page to the Minnesota Vikings in Week 12 and Week 11. Did you? Uh, uh, the more I think about that game, and, and it's it's been two weeks in a row, like the 49ers are playing different, right? You can feel the vibe is different. You can feel to a man on the field more confidence. They're, they're bullying teams that they're playing against, which is all good signs. But I think the last two weeks, and I talked about this a little bit on the air with Dieter Kurtenbach. You can find him uh, doing the KBR Tonight Show on KBR 680 in the Bay Area. We talked a little bit about this. And, and one thing I will say about these last two games, as impressive as they've been, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, but they've still their opponent has allowed them to bully them. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, they've gotten up on the scoreboard early. Um, they've had those long drives, but they were helped out, you know, a ton of penalties. And uh, they didn't necessarily earn all 20 of those plays on that drive against the Jaguars. You know, the Jaguars shooting themselves in the foot, the two early interceptions from Matthew Stafford. One of them is a pick six, gives you free points right there. The defenses are on the field for so long in both of those games, the opposing defenses, um, the arm punt from Matthew Stafford just to start off the game for you, you know, just a gift right out of the box from the Rams. In a game against a team that looks like on paper is being so evenly matched like the Minnesota Vikings, are you worried going forward after you, what you've seen the last two weeks? If they're not allowed to be that bully early, if they don't get the early points and early turnover, something that gives them that juice to start the game, let's say uh, a, a, an opponent gets the opening kickoff and drives down and scores. Can the 49ers play that same brand of ball? Are you worried that they've been allowed to be the bully? And if there's a really even game, they might not be able to take that like they have the last two weeks? No, I, I feel I- like, Go ahead, Croc. No, go ahead. you got it. I, I, honestly, it comes down to me. It's the the mistakes. You know, the, the 49ers should have probably beat that Cardinals team, but those two turnovers, like early on, that was huge. They were bullying that team. They were moving the ball. They had no problems. And then the penalties. I mean, you've seen that number just go down drastically. So I think if they can avoid the penalties and avoid the turnovers, I think they could beat any team in the NFL. That's my, that's my take on it as well. I think that the, the biggest difference is – one, the third down efficiency has gotten yeah. better for w- whatever reason. But two, is just not shooting yourself. And and that's a lot of one of the you know keys to victory that we've said for weeks now. You know, don't do things that's going to really hurt yourself. Now, can they continue to play at this high of a level in the sense of, you know, taking the ball away and not turning it over? I, maybe it won't go as well as it has over the last right. couple of weeks. But there is a scenario where it's just slightly off. And if it's slightly off from what we've seen the last couple of weeks, then that's still good enough to be in the mix of a lot of these games. 
All right, guys, let's play with some playoff scenario. Uh, Wink, last one on the floor. You want to talk about anything with this Jaguars game before we move on to the Vikings? No, it was just straight domination. And they beat a team they should beat. It was good to see. Handled business. Yeah. It was important. Uh, we saw it on Monday Night Football. It was the same exact score, 30 to 10. Buccaneers, better football team than the Giants. Handle your business. Go beat them. Yeah. Niners, you're better than the Jaguars. If you're going to be a playoff team, go beat bad teams like the Jaguars. Go handle your business. And that's what we saw in uh, week 11. All right. Let's move on to some playoff scenarios. Have some fun. fun. Take some uh, mailbag questions from Twitter, maybe some emails as well. Coming up on this episode of Locked On 49ers. And by the way, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Uh, it's Thanksgiving. We all know what that means. Football and nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet online as you covered all holiday season. More props, more odds, and more lines than ever before. And bet online remains your number one spot for all the sporting and betting action this season and this holiday season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website, sign up today, and receive your 50% welcome bonus with promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. You might find your way over to the Vikings and 49ers line. Niners, it looks like at home, are going to be favored by a field goal in this one in Week 12. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for this 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online they are stuffed with deals this thanksgiving season all right fellas how many wins i'm, I'm going to put it out there right now 10 wins it's going to take the 49ers or any team in the nfc 10 wins that's the goal maybe nine and seven sneaks you in but you're going to need help with tiebreakers right be so nine that's and eight that's, right go go or maybe, yeah, maybe even uh or yeah what did I say? Yeah, nine and eight. Nine and eight might get you in. Maybe even uh, eight and nine gets you in. I don't know. But you're going to need some help. You're going to need some tiebreakers. I think 10, you should feel really good, and you should be able to get in. That's five and two the rest of the way for the 49ers. Do, do you guys feel like that's the right number? Does it need to be higher? Does it need to be 11? Because the Seahawks can still win 10 games. The Seahawks have seven left. They can run the table and win 10 games. Is that number even higher than 10? In your opinion? I mean, theoretically they could they could <laughs> they they've done they've been known to do some weird stuff like have some starts to where you're like oh, sure. what's going on with the seahawks they are done the next thing you know they lose one more game the rest of the year or maybe two you know i've seen that story plenty of times so i never count them out i watched michael myers last night halloween kills and they beat him to a pulp and then all of a sudden <laughs> he's back alive and he just kills everybody that reminds me of the seahawks man where you you think they're dead and then they're just like, ah, nah. Nah. <laughs> Ten's the number. Great. Yeah, it sounds right. And like you said, nine and eight might be able to sweep you in, but you're playing tiebreakers there and everything. Eleven definitely gets you in. If you go six and one to finish the year, you could win the NFC West with a record like that. Yeah. Well, let's look, let, let's take a look at this really quick here. Let's see if 10 is the number. Mm. Looking at the 49ers remaining schedule. The only play. Two teams with a winning record. I take it back. Three teams now with a winning record. The Vikings, when we looked at this last week, the Vikings did not have a 500 record. So 500 or better. Now, um, four of their opponents have a 500 or better record. Three winning records. So they got Vikings week 12. Seahawks week 13. Bengals week 14. The Falcons week 15. The Tennessee Titans which we thought might have been a little bit easier game, although they lost to the Texans. And by the way, the Texans mm -hmm. coming up after that in the second to last game for the 49ers and then the Rams. Five wins there? Yeah, I think so. Which ones? Which ones are I those? Think the, only, the only one that really scares me is Tennessee. I mean, you know, St. Louis, obviously, we own them. Uh, Seattle, garbage this year. Me, Cincinnati's a little tricky. What What's city, that? Wink? What city is that? Oh, Los Angeles? Yeah, Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how long has it been since they've been in St. Louis? Oh man, that's a good question. No, uh, I, I we've owned them since then, so it, you know it's just kind true. of always yeah. been a thing. Well, they own the St. Louis Rams just like the Los Angeles Rams, yeah, and Tennessee the first and the original me. Los Angeles Rams. Really, Tennessee? Yeah, Tennessee doesn't scare me for whatever no reason. Receivers? That, that just, I mean, no, I just there's just something about them where I'm just like, that's not a team that I'm scared of. I think with them, it's more so of I think their coach does a really good job of just instilling like a certain level of toughness within mm -hmm. the team and they do a good job of just maybe playing 
uh, you know, what's the word for when someone is not super talented, but then they play like above that? Playing above their station? For? No. Uh, cr- crocky? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Wait, they're, they're, they're not yeah. like that, right? Like they, they are, they, <laughs> gosh, now it's going to kill me. Not to, that word. All right. I'm pretty but sure. They're, about they're, uh, they're overachievers. Overachievers, there, there we go. Gosh, I mean, too many hits to the head. All right, so <laughs> they almost look like overachievers. Yeah, you have, you know, Ryan yeah. Tannehill, and, you know, he's solid. A.J. Brown, I really like him, but it seems like every other play, he's limping off the field yeah. or trying to get up. Julio, we'll see. They have no Derrick Henry, and that's the thing that made them the scariest, and I get it. I think they're the number one seed in the AFC right now, but I just – I've watched them. I just – I don't believe it. Like that, I'm not scared of them. That's not a team I'm worried. The Rams is that's really when you look at the 49ers roster, like it's them. Because at any yeah. moment, like if it clicks, they have everything to where it's just high power. But aside from them, like everybody else, I look at this roster, it's like, I mean, obviously the, the Rams are beatable as well, but very winnable games. It's a very mm-hmm. winnable rest of the schedule if the 49ers are who we think they are. Now, again, right, if they start playing like they were playing early in the year. And we get that version of the 49ers, then it's going to be hard for them to beat anybody. Cincinnati scares me a little bit too. You know, they've got some firepower there on offense. They're Cincinnati's so up and down. The, the way yeah. I look at it is that the 49ers play their brand of ball and play like they have the last two weeks, they could beat all of these teams and then they could no run doubt. the table and go seven or no. Uh, but you're, you know, there's going to be some some hiccups. There's going to be some teams that get on the scoreboard first. Can you, mm-hmm. can you play bully ball in those scenarios? So that's what worries me. And I think at the end of the year, the Niners are going to be in a good spot, but they might have to make sure they take two or three of those last three games, which is Titans, Texans, Rams. So if you take the Titans, uh, the Texans game as you should, you got to either beat the Titans or the Rams at the end of the year. Maybe the Niners even get lucky to where the Texans are screwing around and, and playing rookies because they've got nothing to play for and they're not even playing Tyrod Taylor, who gives them a much better shot to win when he's playing quarterback just because he's a professional, you know, and they don't have a lot of professionals on that roster. Um, maybe the Rams are even sitting. Brandon staffed. Cooks, don't sleep on the Stockton boy. No. Yeah, <laughs> 209. You're high school, Lincoln High School. That's right. Brandon Cooks is legit, but who's going to give him the football, right? That's um, a good point. They Maybe the Rams are are like solidified, and they sit Stafford in week 17. So the, it could even be a, like a really nice, easy end to the schedule if something like that happens. Uh, the Titans have no weapons when A.J. Brown is banged up and and – Julio's out, and it seems like those guys always are banged up. I'm not scared at all. The Falcons, uh, the Seahawks are in a really bad place, but you know, in Seattle, that one's always a tough game. Uh, the Bengals, it could go either way. They're so up and down. I think the 49ers are a more complete football team, but they do have some firepower on that o- offense. And this is a road game for the 49ers in Cincinnati. But really, it all starts with this Vikings game. This is so huge, and I want to bring up uh, a graphic here. This is from. 538.com and their projections for playoff teams. Um, and it, as I call this up here, it's, well, that's not it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So 538, and they've got a, a nice little deal here where, let's see if it comes up. There we go. Yeah. Let's try this. I think it'll look better. Either way, I don't know. Those are the same pretty much. So 538.com, you can see their, percentages to make the playoffs cardinals and packers 99 98 for the titans 95 percent. it's crazy that the chiefs after how bad they played earlier on in the mm-hmm. season are now almost 90 percent to make the playoffs in the afc west and they had a losing record not that long ago but let's go down here to the 49ers so we've got vikings here we've got 49ers here at five and five they think that the Vi- have a better percentage chance to make the playoffs and that's probably because of this seven percent chance they have to win the division whereas the 49ers it's just so much more difficult for them wow. to leapfrog the rams and the cardinals to try to win the division so that helps their playoffs causes and the fact that right now as of today the the vikings would have the tiebreaker over the 49ers because of conference record now obviously there's some head-to-head here that's going to factor in so I'm going to click this little button and it'll show you just what it looks like if the 49ers win or if the the Vikings win this football game. So right now it's 51% chance for the Vikings to make the playoffs, 40% chance for the 49ers to make the playoffs. If the 49ers win this game, they jump all the way up to 56, 57, 58, 59. <laughs> Still going. Here. Okay, 58%. 
that jumps all the way up from 41 to 58 percent chance to make the playoffs if they beat the vikings the vikings drop all the way down to 33 34 percent playoffs so i mean that's a huge huge swing that's how important this football game is if you flip that and you give this win to the vikings they go from 51 to almost 80 percent chance of making the playoffs Wow. A playoff game for the Vikings. Like how much it sw- even swings more for the Vikings. But look how far down it goes for the 49ers. If they lose yeah. this, week, it goes down to 16% chance mm. to make the playoffs. So wow. this is this is a playoff game, guys. Get your playoff faces on because yeah. this is a playoff game. And by the way, if it's a if it's a tie, what happens? I think it's actually a tie bad for the 49ers. It's, it's worse for the 49ers than it is the Vikings. So anyway, yeah, mm. uh, that is okay. Biggest is game pretty, in two years. Uh, it is huge. This is yeah, this is massive. This is the the 49ers playoffs begin in week twelve. Yep, got to show up. Got to take care of business, right? It's at home. You just won a home game. Got to keep it rolling. Actually, you know what? Let's let's go back to that. Let's play it. Let's play with it really quick. Let's say if the 49ers lose to the Vikings. But then Gotta win lie. against Seattle and win against Cincinnati. Okay. See, that still only puts them at thirty-one percent chance to make Ew, the playoff. It's not good. So, yeah. Well, because yeah, you look at who Minnesota has ne- next week, and it's Detroit. So they're already counting that as a W. Big win, big big game. Yeah, big game against the Minnesota Vikings in week. 12 let's dip into this locked on 49ers mailbag next shall we but first i want to tell you all about my friends at built bar and if you haven't tried built bar by now i don't know what you're doing you're missing out they say it's a protein bar but it does not taste like one you have to try these amazing bars for yourself to believe it most protein bars chalky waxy just plain hard to choke down Uh, This is something different. The moment you bite into it, you realize it, and it starts with the 100% chocolate that these things are covered in. It's a legit chocolate. It's really good. And when you bite into it, it's an experience. It's one that you will enjoy. It's It's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Built bars are low in carb, low in calorie, low in fat, low in sugar, and, of course, high in protein. So all the healthy benefits on top of being just purely Delicious and so many flavors. I love the peanut butter. Uh, mint brownie is really good. One of the new flavors, which is a uh, blueberry, which I like quite a bit. Cherry barcia, a take on the old uh, ice cream flavor that you might be familiar with, which is really good too. So you really can't go wrong. If you like coconut, I, I don't. Croc Wink, are you, are you coconut guys? The one you yeah. gave me was coconut. It was good. Yeah. So coconut, I, I like like a coconut from an actual like coconut shell, but I don't like hmm. coconut flavored stuff. So, okay. You go straight to the actual source, the coconut. I'm kind of that I way. I do of, like coconut water, but I don't know. I'm I'll take coconut on anything. Really? Now you can sprinkle it on something. The, the, the smell oh, yeah, of it the, is. The oh, consistency man. really gets me. If, if I actually Love bite it. into the coconut, ugh, that's not good. But uh, the coconut flavor is is better when you don't when you don't bite into stuff. But I mean, whatever your flavor is, they've got it. And some mystery flavors and new flavors every few days here for this month and a Thanksgiving special mystery flavor at built.com. So don't miss out. Go to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15. Get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, guys. It's mailbag time. Before we get into that, how about oh. Trent Williams coming out? PFF, not just the best lineman graded wise in the NFL, the best graded NFL player right now. Yeah. Can't believe it. I, actually, believe I can't it, believe it. I can't yeah. believe it. He's amazing. 100%. He, he is knocking people on their mm-hmm. ass every single play, especially when yep. they run the ball. I mean, if you want to know why the 49ers are good at running the ball, how about line up George Kittle on one side, you have Lake and Tomlinson on the other side with Trent Williams. Just run left all day, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan needs to circle the run left play on his playbook and make sure he gets that in his script as much as possible. Right, Croc? Have, have y'all seen that new like technique he does? And I don't know if it's a new thing from him, but I've never seen anyone else do it. But it's like this, uh, is like he like just does that to people. Oh, and yeah. They just fall. Smacks him on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I've never he's, seen he's anybody do that before. It's great. I've never he's seen a big man. Like, he can do it. And he, I mean, he's doing it consistently. It's like he just grabs him, slaps him, and then just 
pushes them down yep. into the ground. And I'm like, you know, I thought it was just like a one time thing, but it's like doing it to everybody down there, every place. It's really crazy to see. It's like they're little kids. It's like, man, y'all my little, y'all my son. Yeah. It is. You know it, it is. It's like he's the dad playing with his kids in the black backyard. Say, okay, here's yep. the quarterback. This fence post over here is the quarterback. Let's see if you can touch it. And then what does he do, Croc? <laughs> It's like you're swatting away mobs or something. Hey, it's it, it works, man. Whatever technique yeah, that is, it works. For you offensive beautiful. line experts, hit us up at BD Peacock, at Eric underscore Crocker, at Bay Area Wink. Let us know what that technique's called that uh that Trent Williams is using to just bust fools out there uh, on the offensive line. This one from Sam. He said, It seems like since the 49ers cut Jalen Hurd. Debo has been utilized more out of the backfield. Kyle made a comment about one of the reasons they drafted Hurd was his ability as a runner. Any chance that Kyle drew these plays up for Hurd and they're now being used for Debo? What do you think? Well, yeah. he, he mentioned that, you know, he saw how well Debo was able to run the second half of his rookie year. And he's like, you know what? Might be good to kind of use, utilize that guy more in the run game. So I don't know if it was that or if that maybe was the plan for uh, Hurd, who – you know, if you go back to Hurd's Baylor film, yes, he was a slot receiver. He did well there. Sometimes they lined up outside. But when they got into the red zone, they put him right there at running back and lined him up on some and do some ISO runs with him. So he was a receiver. I think he caught for almost 1,000 yards his, that last year at Baylor. They would also put him at running back in short yardage situations consistently. It wasn't just like a gimmick thing here and there. It was short yardage, put Hurd at running back. Maybe the 49ers were going to utilize that as well. I think it's more of a coincidence that it just so happened that when Hurd got cut was also when they were having some issues at running back and with some injuries and stuff like that. I don't think ideally Kyle Shanahan wants to give Debo Samuel eight, nine, 10 carries a game. He wants to utilize that when it's necessary and when it can help the team. And it's, it's not smart. Like Debo, I don't, I don't like it really. Cause Debo's mm -hmm. going to get himself hurt if he's used like a running back and and a lot of these runs get him to the outside so he's in space so it's not as bad but i don't like the ones where he's like strictly in the backfield and he gets met with linemen and linebackers you know at the line of scrimmage right. that that starts to scare me a little bit so I, ideally i don't think he's carrying the ball as much as he is but we saw the usage last year he was a 100 percent gadget guy last year he was hardly used as a true wide receiver so uh, a lot of handoffs and um shovels and screens and and everything you can think of to get him the football. So I don't think that's a new thing for Debo, but maybe Kyle Shanahan went a little bit deeper into his bag, and maybe that was one of the things where he's like, well, we don't have the herd plays to use for herd anymore, so let's see if Debo can run some of these. So maybe he did get a couple extra. Who knows? I just think it's that old adage of, you know, you, you get the ball in your best player's hands, and yeah. Debo may be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. I mean, maybe the best football player. I mean, can't really call him a wide receiver at this point, right? Uh, he might be offensive player of the year, non-quarterback division right in uh in right. the nfl this year and you're right he's the mvp of the 49ers team get the ball to him any way you can i think that's really the game plan and he probably would be one of their best running backs if he was just purely used as a running back but right i don't know if that's the smartest way to use him but man he's so good at it so and it's really nice to see the compliments now in the passing game come out so when you have kittle catching touchdowns and you have brandon Ayuk getting more usage and i love that throw in the end zone to brandon Ayuk and um, splitting the safeties there. It's just the, the 49ers offense is humming right now. We've talked about the offensive line. We've talked about the receivers and uh, the quarterbacks. It's going to be fun talking tomorrow about the quarterbacks and the pretty much, I don't know, the poster boys for right. efficiency in 2021 of the NFL, especially the last month for Jimmy Garoppolo and pretty much all year long for the most part for Kirk Cousins, this is going to be a good matchup. And we're going to talk with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings about that very subject tomorrow on another Thursday crossover episode. Wink, I always appreciate you jumping on the show with us. It's always a pleasure to chat ball with you. Yeah, pleasure's mine, guys. Thanks. Make sure y'all go find Wink on Twitter at Bay Area Wink. Croc and I will be back tomorrow as we do talking with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings and getting you ready for this Week 12 matchup with another Locked On Podcast Network crossover. Thanks for making us your first listen every day right here, Locked On 49ers. See you.